Hello and welcome in today's exciting episode. I will be making a little black dress. I'll be using a McCall's pattern and yeah, ta-da, this is what it turns out like. It's perfect, 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 perfect. Perfect jacket. I have been threatening to make a dress for an absolute age. So this is the jacket I was working on and I just love it so much, but I reluctantly put it aside. Now, these are the two dress patterns I was, if you watch the fabric haul, these are the ones I was thinking about doing, but um, they each have a few tricky bits in them. So I thought I'd start with something um, more simple. And this, so yeah, I sort of flicked through my patterns and came up with this one. I'm going to, I think I like all of them actually, all four, but I think I'll start with the um, blue and white one, view A. It's sleeveless and has a shorter skirt. So um, yeah, I just read through the instructions and um, then I got out the, it looked pretty straightforward. So I got out the pattern and traced all the pieces that I needed. Um, I was a little confused because with view A, uh, the lining of the bodice seems to be exactly the same as the outer piece. Whereas with um, C and D, it's, um, it's a simplified version, so yeah. Did what they said, but it's very unusual when you have pleats on the outside to also have pleats on the lining. It's usually simplified. Anyway, um, I just made sure I used a really thin fabric for the lining. So um, yeah, I cut out all my traced bits and then I cut out them in the fabric. I've used um, a, just a black homespun cotton fabric as the outer and then the in the lining is cotton vol, which is just a plain cotton that's even thinner and lighter than a cotton lawn. So first up, I have to do the pleats at the top of the front on the bodice. And there's also, I read ahead, there's also pleats on the front of the skirt. So I put aside the back pieces of the skirt and the bodice, and I'm just gonna focus on the front pieces. So this is the front bodice and it's got three pleats. So I did pleat one, then I did pleat three. And once they were both done, I did the center one. I just found that was easier to do. And I just held up the piece to the light and um, yeah, because you probably can't see my markings from here, but yeah, the markings were on the um, each piece. So I just held it up and I didn't have a problem doing it. And then I did the skirt and that one had three on each side again. So I just did one side, then the other side. And then um, you have to baste across. So basting is just stitching. It's a placeholder stitch that you have to put there while you're making the garment. And then once all your pieces of are sewn together you take out your basting stitches and the pleats just magically stay because everything's together so yeah I did um you were supposed to baste each individual pleat which would have taken forever so I just basted across all of them and I used back stitches so it was a little tricky getting my orange thread out but um yeah it I felt like it, I was doing it in a faster time so what you see here is the um the two front linings, the two front outer pieces and the um, the skirt. So then I pressed all of them. So I just ironed them. And then the next bit was um, you just have to sew the back and the front together. So I started with the skirt because the skirt was the easiest, most simple. So I just um, pinned them together along the side and then I laid out the bodice back and then I put the bodice fronts on top of it and I pinned them at the shoulders and then I did the same for the bodice lining which kind of looks similar to the outer bodice. So then I had to stitch get out the machine again and stitch them all together 
And then the next thing I had to do was press them open. You didn't have to trim them down at all. You just press them open. And then the next bit was a little bit tricky. <laughs> so I sort of had to just read it a few times. So basically the next thing you have to do is stitch around the entire neck hole and down the front because it's sort of an open V. And and you also have to stitch the armholes because there's no sleeves on this. So, um, yeah, and then once you've done that, you have to um, understitch. So, yeah, I was at first I was like, oh, maybe I should just do the neckline and machine understitch that. So here I am pinning the lining to the outer bodice. And I machine sewed that and then I was like, actually, no, I'll just machine sew everything. So I pinned the sleeves as well and then I machine sewed them. And then the next thing I was like, well, that looks good, but I really need to press it before I can do anything else. So I pressed it and then I decided to, um, you're supposed to understitch next, but I just felt like it was a little bit impossible to do that. So I uh, I um trimmed down the um the seams and it didn't say how much. So I just trimmed down by half and then I just clipped all the curves, so basically put notches in everywhere and then I turned the whole thing inside out. So you sort of have to it's really quite tricky and clever. You sort of have to really really carefully pull the pleated things through the back so you sort of bring out the front. It's very confusing but if you sort of do it very slowly. I did it one front at a time and they sort of came through and then you sort of have to smush it around and straighten them all out again and then I ironed them so that they all looked proper and then yeah so I still hadn't done the understitching and I definitely couldn't use the machine to do it now so I just sort of put a few pins in place so I knew what I was doing so see how see-through this fabric is that's the cotton vol, and you can see that there's two different black tones so yeah it's very clear when you're working with it one's a nice dense homespun cotton and the other is a really really fine cotton like a cotton lawn so yeah I stitched the um, lining and the two seam allowance bits together and you can if you look very very carefully you can see a few stitches right at the edge there but this is the outside and there's not a single stitch here it's just magically all stays in place and it's yeah it's very cool so the next thing now that that was all done is that I have to stitch so that bit there is done so the next step here is that I have to sew machine sew all the sides together so um and then I have to base together the two fronts so I was like, hmm, okay, sewing together, machine sewing the sides is fine. But the picture they have of how you stitch to get base together the two fronts is incorrect. See, it says that you just butt them up against each other. Whereas on the actual pieces, there's um, about an inch from the edge is marked the center. So you actually have to cross them over each other which is what the picture on the front of the um sewing pattern says anyway so yeah and so I sort of just went through the um the whole of the instructions and right at the end of the instructions it says that yeah you have to cross them over each other so yeah I did it that way see here's the um the end I skipped right to the end of the instructions and yeah they're over each other so um yeah now that I'd sorted that out, it's not going to be basted along. It's going to be basted, yeah, across each other. So I pinned, I didn't really, you're supposed to base the whole thing around, like sew the whole thing together, the front and the lining, and I just pinned it. I think the point of that instructions was that you're supposed to treat them all as one piece, the bodice now as one piece. So, yeah. 
So you basically have to pin the bodice to the skirt and you have to pin all the layers together. First I had to machine sew the sides of the bodices together and then I had to press the um, seams open. And now this is me um, pinning the bodice, so pinning all the layers of the bodice together and then once they're all pinned together, I actually, I put the pins in the wrong way because you yeah, so I had to sort of twist them around so that they wouldn't get stuck between the, yeah, when I was pinning the two, the skirt and the bodice together. So here they are all pinned together. It was, it, the dress just sat up by itself. There's just so much fabric there because of all the pleats and everything. So um, yeah, once I'd pinned everything together, I just double checked and then I sewed around it once with the sewing machine. Then I turned it out just to check that everything was fine and I hadn't like accidentally sewn it wrong. And then I turned it back in and um, reinforced it. So just did the machine, sew it again. So then the next step is, and then I turned it out again. So the next step is to add elastic to the, um, the back mm. and yeah I read the instructions and I have the wrong elastic I'm not going to be able to do what they say to do so I just pressed this um, so on the inside I've pressed the seam the waist seam downwards into the skirt and um, yeah so what it says to do next is to sew the um, yeah, see, it didn't say what sort of elastic to get. So I just, yeah, I had elastic in my um, leftover from when I made those tiered skirts. So I was like, oh, that'll be fine. But yeah, you're supposed to use the really, really thin elastic. But yeah, I'll have to use this instead. So um, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to just sew along the edge of your... Um, seam allowance and then thread a thin elastic through that and then sew it to either side seam but yeah I'm just going to sew it to either side seam and then also machine sew like vertical not horizontal so it wrecks the elastic yeah so I just sort of sewed it and then it didn't quite have enough um purchase so I just um, measured out the in-between bits and I um, sewed up and down and up and down so I went forward then reverse and forward then reverse again so I did that and yeah and I turned it out and put it on the mannequin and it worked out pretty well but I did decide that just did the side seams here and just had to stitch these down. So like five, six stitches on each side so that my big bit of elastic always stays down and doesn't flip up accidentally. So that's done. And then I had to take out all my or bright orange um, basting stitches, which held the plats, um, the pleats in place. And then the next thing is you have to put press studs in you just stitch you're supposed to stitch three really small ones and put them in here and that way it doesn't sort of gape at all so yeah I haven't done that because I was losing the light so um yeah but those are the ones I'm going to use the really small ones and I also haven't yet done the hem because I'm just going to let um hang this dress for a day or two and just let see if anything um, falls you know how the bias always drops sometimes and yeah so I'll just let that hang for a little while and once it's um, dropped all it's going to drop I will do it's a baby hem so it's just like tiny folded over then folded over again then hand sew it so it's quite simple hem but yeah so it's pretty much done it's <laughs> it's not finished but um, yeah, I just thought I either had to photograph it now, film it now, or I'd have to wait uh, like ages. And I still had, there's just so much editing involved <laughs> in doing these um, videos. It's ridiculous. So this is the back and um, this is the front and the side. 
And yeah, I'm really, really happy with the way it turned out. It's much more formal. Like if you see the um the dress on the like the picture that they have on the website and on the um sewing pattern, it looks like one of those casual day dresses that the cast were on that TV show Friends. Whereas, yeah, I feel like the dress I made looks more like, you know, breakfast at Tiffany's type little black dress. And um, yeah, it's, I just think it's beautiful. I'm really, really happy with the way that it turned out. I do think that um, the floppy material probably makes it easier to get it on and over your head. But just in general, I think it's gorgeous. I'm very tempted to embellish it. But for now, I'll just hang it up and wait for the hem to drop. And yeah, I think I'll get back to my um, oil slick bugle beads and the jacket I'm embellishing the um, blue Chanel tweed with um, sort of flecks of other colours is just so, it's such a beautiful tweed. And yeah, I love the way these beads sparkle in the light, in the nightlight. So pretty. But yeah, so is this dress. I'm so pleasantly surprised with the way it, was tur it turned out because yeah, I was absolutely dreading making a dress because making jackets and um, beading, they are my wheelhouse, but yeah, I have not made a dress in, gosh, it has to have been at least a decade. So yeah, I was very anxious about how it would turn out, but yeah, I really love it. And um, yeah, it's a little bit fancy, but oh my gosh, the pleats are a nightmare. As you can see, I did not iron it very well. But um, yeah, I don't have an ironing board. I just, because I mostly wear, just wear jeans and a t-shirt and um, a jacket. And so basically everything, anything that ever needs to be pressed gets dry cleaned. And um, if I ever need to use my iron, I just put a towel or two down on my workbench and iron on that. So yeah, <laughs> doing the pleat work was a little bit challenging for this dress. But yeah, pretty cool happy with the way it turned out but yeah I do think I'll have to buy an ironing board anyway thank you for watching and um yeah I hope you feel inspired to make that dress you've been putting off because yeah this dress actually only took me a day to make in the end and I have been putting it off for months and months so yeah but um yeah very 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 happy with the way that it turned out and yeah now back to beating that Chanel tweed jacket. Oh, and the sewing pattern I used is McCall's 7381. Sorry about that. There's a link in the description box.